Hello friends, my name is Surreal Emil and welcome back to some more Forza Top Gear laps. Today we're taking a look at some rally cars, so let's jump into it with the first car of today, which is the Subaru Impreza WRX STI from 2004. This car has 278 horsepower and 3,270 pounds of weight. That means that this is the most powerful vehicle here today, although not by much, and the heaviest car here today, although again, not by much. So, how does the 2004 Impreza drive? Well, it drives very similar to pretty much every other Impreza you drive in this game, uh, which basically means it's a nice driving car. Uh, understeer is very much present in this vehicle. It is sort of only low to mild understeer, but it's always present, you can always feel it, and, you know, it is uh, definitely a factor in the way these things drive. Ultimately, you know, understeer does suit my driving style more than oversteer would, so for me, driving the Impretzas is perfectly fine. I'm sure if you're one of the people who prefer to go solo, you prefer oversteer over understeer, you might want to avoid the Impretzas. Either way, of course, four-wheel drive, decent amount of power means that in a straight line on acceleration and so on, this vehicle is relatively quick. Uh, it is a C-Class car, uh, around the top of C-Class, I believe. All the Impretzas are ranked relatively the same uh, because, well, they're all pretty much the same. They all drive about the same. Uh, you know, their power figures and weight figures aren't too far off of each other. But, you know, ultimately, I really, really like Impretzas, so that's fine by me. Also, this design is awesome. I like it a lot. All these cars have the correct, well, correct-ish designs on them. Anyways, next up, a Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution 8 MR, 277 horsepower, 3,109 pounds of weight. Um, one less horsepower than the Impreza and a uh, quite a bit less weight, actually. A fair amount less weight than there would be on the Impreza. So, the Evo 8, how does it drive? Well, it's kind of the same as the Subaru. Uh, you know, the Evo and the Subaru are very comparable. Uh, when it comes to each other. Uh, I will say the Impreza is probably my preferred choice out of these two. Uh, the Evo isn't bad. Uh, it is just a little bit slower uh, straight line wise and through the corners it's just that little bit. It's not quite as good. Ultimately though, you know, obviously it does have the weight advantage and the power isn't that far off so when it comes to actual leaderboard times, these two cars should be per very close to each other. Maybe on paper, the Evo is the slightly quicker of the two. Um, again, I did prefer driving the Impreza. I'm an Impreza guy over an Evo guy, definitely. Uh, but, it's not a bad car, the Evo 8, certainly. I mean, you know, you can't really mess up a four-wheel drive uh, saloon car with 300 horsepower-ish, really. Uh, it's a bit impossible to do. So, of course, these cars drive well. Uh, again, the Evo, uh, really nice uh, livery on this one as well. It was really hard to find a, uh, in, uh, an Evo livery as well. I found like a 555 livery for it and all sorts. It was strange. Anyways, um, next up, Toyota Celica GT4 ST205. 255 horsepower, 3,175 pounds of weight. So, uh, the Celica then. Well, it is one of the heavier vehicles here today. In fact, £3,175 means it is heavier than the Evo, and it is down in on power compared to the Evo and Impreza. Of course, this is reflected in the PI. I believe this is a D-Class car. Um, but either way, the S2205 has always been my favourite of the Celicas. Uh, I just really like the way this thing looks, to be honest with you. I've always really, really liked the GT4. Uh, model of this particular car. De again, definitely my favourite of the Celicas. I do like Celicas, actually. Um, I would look at getting one in real life, actually. These are really cool cars. I would like a GT4, but I'm not sure if they ever sold them in the UK. Anyways, uh, the Celica, when it comes to driving, it's alright. It is a pretty alright car. Um, a little bit, I don't know, because of the sort of slower speed, it is, in my opinion, a little bit better to drive. Uh, then the Evo and the Impreza. It is a hard car to launch this one though. Um, with sort of cars with turbochargers, they can struggle launching. We haven't seen too much in this season so far, uh, but I believe it's a problem we're going to start seeing now that we're getting into sort of the lower powered turbo cars. Launching this thing is really just a case of full throttling it uh, when the lights go green and then just praying to God you get a good launch. So. Anyways, next up, Peugeot 205 Turbo 16, 200 horsepower, 2,524 pounds of weight. Second least powerful vehicle here today. 
Um, the 205 is actually uh, one of my more favourite of the cars. We're getting into the sort of Group B uh, rally cars now, of course. That's sort of everyone's, for the most part, that's everyone's favourite era of a rallying. And the 205 Turbo 16 is known for being, well, one of the most successful uh, Group B cars of all time. Anyways, the 205, of course, this is the road-going version, not the rally version, so it doesn't have crazy, you know, 500 horsepower and so on. The, the, the real-life Turbo 16 was a, a mental piece of kit. Um, however, the road version of the car, it's actually a really fun car to drive this. This is the most fun I've had driving a car for a long time. I don't know what it is about it, it's just, it's a really very fun car to drive. You can chuck it everywhere. It's... It's a fun little car to drive, fun little hot hatch actually. Um, you know, as far as competitiveness here, it is down on power, but, you know, I'm kind of curious to see how this compares to, you know, the modern Super Minis and even, you know, the likes of the Escort Cosworth. Because again, you know, it's four wheel drive, the power figures are relatively similar on these cars, it could be an interesting battle on our leaderboard. But yeah, to go drive the C16 because it is really a very fun car to drive. Next up, Lancia 037 Stradale, 202 horsepower, 2,540 pounds of weight. Very similar stats to the 205 there, of course. A little bit more power, a little bit more weight. Um, the 037 Stradale is also lacking uh, the two-wheel drive. This is actually a rear-wheel drive car. The only Group B rally car to ever challenge uh, the Audi Quattro with rear-wheel drive. Uh, so that's a little thing for you. Anyways, uh, the O37 Stradale is known in Forza for being a leaderboard barnstormer. And every time I drive this thing, it is not hard to see why. The O37 is a very, very good car to drive. Um, a very well balanced car. Uh, you know, when it comes to the Group B rally cars, uh, sort of from standard in the game, the O37 is probably the best handling out of all of them. It is a really, really good handling car, this one. Um, really like driving the O37 Stradale. I mean, admittedly, you know, I obviously, I, I prefer the Delta S4. If we're talking Group B Lancers, you know, the Delta S4 is the one I prefer because twin charging bro. Um, but the O37, you know, nothing can really match it when it comes to its handling. It drives better than most modern sports cars do. And it's probably quicker, because around the track, this thing is phenomenally quick. You know, it's only a very low C-Class car, and this thing can just dominate a track. Uh, next up, a Renault 5 Turbo, 157 horsepower, 2,138 pounds of weight. The least powerful vehicle here today, however, it is also the lightest. Uh, the Renault 5 Turbo is um, a, a decent car, certainly. Uh, when it comes to the driving ability of this car, it is decent. Uh, I've built quite a few of these up uh, with turbo rally engines and so on, and they've always been pretty successful as uh, race cars. From standard, it is slow. 157 horsepower really is not a lot. I mean, that's that's less than most of the modern sort of hot super minis have. Um, but, you know, it is mid-engined rear-wheel drive. Uh, the weight is nice and low, uh, which is good in this car. It is a decent car to drive, the 5 Turbo. Um, you know, I've spoken before how when it comes to sort of these lower powered cars, it really is hard to make them drive terribly because they don't really have enough power to upset them. In the case of the 5 Turbo, that is the case. It has got a relatively short wheelbase. Uh, that was one of the things I was kind of expecting with this car and actually the next car as well. Um, it could have been twitchy. The 5 Turbo is a decent car, although if you do get a wheel on the grass or something, it doesn't like it. It will just throw you out. It is weird. Uh, just stay away from the grass and puddles in this car, and you'll be alright. Uh, other than that, the 5 Turbo is a very good car, actually. Uh, did enjoy uh, driving this one. And finally today, we have the MG Metro 6R4, 250 horsepower, 2,161 pounds of weight. Second lightest car here today, however, it is eh, actually on the power front, it is pretty decent as well. So, admittedly, that bringing the Metro here is a little bit unfair. Every other car here today is a C class car, D class car. The Metro is an A class car uh, because, unlike the rest of these, I believe the 6R4 in game is like the actual rally go go version of it. Um, but there you go. 
Anyways, the Metro 6R4, how does it drive? It's great. It really is great. You'd expect this thing to twitch like buggery, and if you put upgrades into it, it will. Um, but from standard, very, very good handling car. This car suits the Top Gear track down to a T because, you know, the handling is brilliant. You know, the gears are very short on this car. It only has a five speed. It tops out at about 120 miles per hour. However, around Top Gear, it just doesn't quite get to the point where that would be an issue. You know, it doesn't quite get up to its top speed, and that's good. Uh, it really is. Phenomenal car to drive the Metro. Uh, it's just a crazy, crazy experience every time you jump behind the wheel of this thing. And it's still a surprisingly good car to drive, and it's it's a Metro. It's silly. A Metro should not be doing this. If you know what a real-life Metro is, it shouldn't be doing this, but it does. It's crazy. Anyways, unsurprisingly, the fastest car today is the Metro. However, surprisingly, is where it goes on the board. 31st, 123.568 means it's actually quicker than a Ford GT and a GT40 and a Lamborghini Diablo and an Audi RS6 Avant. Very, very quick time from the Metro there. Moving down the board, Impreza goes into 64th for 128.847. Little bit off the 2015 model, however, it is quicker than a Golf R, which is good. Uh, the Evo 8 goes into 69th for 129.113. Uh, so the Impreza did win that battle. The Evo still didn't put in a particularly bad time, though. A little bit slower than an RS3 Sportback. It is quicker than the Fast and Furious Eclipse, though. Uh, which isn't too bad from that car. Moving down the board, 037 Stradale goes into 75th with a 129.737, which is a very quick time, actually. It beats out uh, Lotus Carlton, uh, Supra, BMW M1, beats out 22B. The 037 is a ridiculously fast car, especially considering the class it is in. Uh, moving down the board some more, we find the 205 Turbo 16 in 93rd with 131. 0.137, pretty good time, does beat the Escort and the Delta and the Clio V6 actually, so yeah, a pretty good time from that car overall. And finally we find the Celica GT4 in 106 for 133.097, uh, it does beat our Subaru BRZ and at the bar 500, and the Renault 5 Turbo is just a little bit off that bar 500 going to 109th with a 133.548, does beat out the Civic Type R's though, so yeah, pretty decent showing from all of the cars here today. So anyways friends, I hope you've enjoyed watching, thank you for watching. Uh, in the next episode we're going to be taking a look at some cheap O cars, cars for under 20k credits. Will they upset cars that are a bit more expensive than them? Find out next time on Forza Top Gear Laps. Anyways, thank you all very much for watching, my name's been The Real Emil, until next time, farewell.